The Swedish newspaper Dagens Industry reported that Saab, the manufacturer of the JAS-39 Gripen fighter jet, continues to negotiate with Canada about a potential deal, even as Ottawa remains committed to acquiring Lockheed Martin's F-35 Lightning II. The news of renewed talks with Saab comes at a time when Canada is navigating complex economic and geopolitical challenges. Trade tensions with the United States, particularly threats of tariffs, have prompted Ottawa to reassess its reliance on American defense suppliers. These tensions are not merely economic, they reflect broader concerns about the stability of U.S. foreign policy and its implications for Canada's role in the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD. As a key partner in NORAD, Canada shares responsibility for defending North American airspace, a mission increasingly focused on the Arctic, where Russia and China are expanding their military presence. The Gripen, a lightweight, cost-effective fighter designed for operations in austere environments, presents an intriguing alternative to the F-35, a stealth jet tailored for network-centric warfare. Yet, the decision to even consider Saab's offer suggests Canada is exploring ways to assert greater autonomy in its defense strategy without jeopardizing its alliance with Washington. The latest variants, the Gripen E and F, represent a leap forward in capability. The Gripen E, a single-seat model, and the Gripen F, a two-seat version, are powered by the General Electric F414 engine, which delivers 22,000 pounds of thrust enabling a top speed of Mach 2 and a combat radius of approximately 500 miles with external fuel tanks. The aircraft measures 49 feet in length with a wingspan of 27 feet and has a maximum takeoff weight of 36,400 pounds. It can carry a payload of up to 15,900 pounds, including a mix of air-to-air -air missiles like the Meteor and AIM-120 AMROM, air-to-ground munitions such as the GBU-39 small-diameter bomb, and anti-ship weapons like the RBS-15. Ottawa's challenge is to reconcile these competing priorities without alienating its closest ally or compromising its security. A hybrid approach, maintaining a core F-35 fleet while incorporating Gripens for Arctic patrols, could thread the needle, but it risks logistical complexity and political friction. Ultimately, the negotiations with Saab signal a pivotal moment for Canada's defense posture. Will Ottawa double down on its partnership with the United States, or will it carve out a more independent path, leveraging Sweden's offer to diversify its capabilities? The answer may hinge on factors beyond aircraft specifications, trade dynamics, Arctic security, and the delicate dance of alliances. As Canada weighs its options, one question lingers. Can it afford to prioritize sovereignty over interoperability, or is the Gripen merely a bargaining chip in a high-stakes game with Washington?